Okay, we're recording. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. It's March 21st, Thursday, and this is a meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Seeing that we have a quorum, I'm going to call the meeting to order. And I need to first make sure that since we're doing this virtually, that everyone can hear and be heard. And we have one member of the committee who said she'd be a little late, but she's due to arrive. So I'm just going to call out names and just let me know, let us know whether you can hear us fine. Lee. Here. Hegner. Yes. Bob Hegner. Present. Sarah Marshall. Here. Eugene. Here. Jennifer. Here. Anna. Present. And did, did I miss anyone? I don't think so. And Kathy is here. So um, today's agenda, Sandy, the review of the update on the five-year plan was the first item. Do you want to do uh, the projects first? I think we just had a placeholder on the agenda to have that be first. But you're muted. Um, I didn't. I'm sorry, I did not know that. I did not see the agenda. So I um, I do not have anything to say. Okay. Then we... I, I, that, that, I went and had a, an update just in case we had new info, but we uh, we weren't planning on sharing it. Yeah, no, we have, we have placeholders in sort of, you know, so it means that we can discuss it should you have had it. So we, we, we're going right. right. We're got, going a right away to um, school and town IT, um, and I believe that's Sean. Is that correct, Sean? So schools would be Jerry Champagne. I don't know. And Do Jerry, I don't think he has anything. No, year? I don't think. I think it was. It was. I think it was all you. It's, so yeah, okay. I didn't see anything from the schools. Yeah, there's nothing from the schools. So it's it's you, Sean. Okay. Welcome. Thanks. Um, so if you want me, just um, like we have years past, just run through the. Yeah, if you if you there. run through what we've done is you run through the proposals and to the, we all got them in advance. So if you have, if we have questions or comments, um, we'll make them after I think after you've gone through them. Okay. Um. So the the first one that we have, um, I don't know the order you have them in, but um, the one that we typically ask for every year is infrastructure replacements, and that's our PCs, our switches, um, kind of all the, the stuff we have on a normal replacement schedule, our PCs we replace every five years, our access points tend to be six plus years, switches and that kind of stuff. So that's in there. You can see it's a little higher um, this uh, FY25 than it has been in years past and in years futures. And um, that's just because we're at the, the five-year point on our um, servers which run everything from our Munis financial system to vision for the assessors. Basically everything we run in house runs on, on these four or five servers. Um, and so there's a, there's a increase um, for FY25 as a request to replace those servers just because they're, they'll be five years old at that point and, and at the point where it makes sense to replace them. And then, the existing servers will basically become backup servers. So with some sort of disaster, they we would we would still use them, but um, they won't be our our primary servers. So that's that item. I don't know if you want me to stop between items or just run through the items. Um, you don't have very many, so why don't you do them all and then we okay. could, if that's all right. Yeah, that I Sounds think that's good. To me. good. Sounds good to me. Um, so the next one that I have that's another usual one is the library IT equipment. Um, that again, we typically ask for that every year. Um, this one, there is a um, increased amount this year and that was in anticipation of the construction of the library. Um, and so obviously that is not happening, happening as quickly as was expected. So the the increase for the library IT equipment could could be pushed out to future um, a future fiscal year if it made sense. Um, but that's basically the why you see an increase there. That's the same 
the same idea as the town uh, infrastructure replacements. That's all the computers and switches, um, basically all the networking equipment over mm -hmm. at the library. And then the last one that we have in there that's um, a unusual or you know one-time thing that we don't um, that we ask for is a replacement for our HR applicant tracking system. So right now the system we're using is part of our Civic HR, which is part of our um, Civic Plus website. Um, that's been that's being discontinued this September, um, and we have an opportunity to take the applicant tracking and move it into our Munis financial system. Um, and the, there's some big, big advantages there that the, when somebody applies for a job, um, it tracks, um, you know, tracks all the information as far as their application, their, the whole process through um, interview and selection. But then at the end of that process, because it's part of the Munis system, all their information they filled in as part of their application automatically feeds into Munis, which is our financial HR system. So it, um, HR is pretty excited about it because it would be a big um, big efficiency gain for them. Um, and then the other part for us is it takes the employee self-service, which we use, and then citizen self-service, which if anybody who's paid a tax bill online use a citizen self-service, it moves that to a hosted environment um, and it it takes it from being hosted in the town where we have to worry about the security of it and everything else to um, the vendor, Munis or Tyler Technology, our vendor will then manage that. That's our, our three. Okay, so questions, comments? Bob? Yeah, I'm just wondering, um, do do we purchase the laptops and the, the servers or do we lease them? And if we lease them, would we save money over purchasing? It's it's kind of kind of like a, you know, it's every year you'd have to pay for it. So I don't know if it would save any money at all. Yeah, we purchased them um, prior to being director. Um, there was a time where we leased um, a lot of things, and Sandy, Sandy, or I think General Fountain may have more information about well, Sandy. But I know there were some changes as far as procurement um, and what it meant to lease versus buy something. Um, so I mean, it certainly it certainly would be worth looking into again. Um, but I think that it, it tends to. When we looked at it last time, it was a better deal for us to just buy things outright, outright rather than lease them. Um, I think, I think procurement got a little bit tricky with leasing. Um, and what what we also found is we we tend to, we tend to use things beyond what the lease terms would be. Um, and about ten years ago, we Dell, who we buy most of our um, laptops and PCs from, they switched things from being uh, basically a zero dollar buyout so we were kind of it's, it was always kind of a lease to own to all of a sudden mm -hmm. um, it was a three year lease much more like a like you would lease a car and at the end we would we either had to buy them out or, or hand them back in so it got a little got a little complex for us yeah. you know it'd be worth looking into but... yeah I don't know if you again I, I, I only asked the question because I I, I don't know and didn't know the answer. And, um, you know, I'm not sure leasing is actually cheaper in the long run than buying since you have to replace them so often. So I don't know, but yeah. Any other questions? I had one and I think you answered it. Um, I wasn't, I didn't completely understand why the job application system linking it to Munis created efficiencies. But but what I'm hearing you say is basically you don't have to enter the same data twice. You capture it once and Yeah, exactly. And, and I then it's Yeah. And my understanding is that takes a lot of um the HR managers time getting that information from people a, a second time. And it's it's frustrating to the people because the applicants but they have already They've already filled it out once, and now they're asked to fill it out again. Um, and this will just 
shoot so, it right, right into Munis. So the $25,000 brings you a new system that integrates. And over time, it's labor savings is the way, it, Correct. The way yeah. you, would, you would describe it um, as the payback to the town. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And you and I and I think I heard you say quickly is that the the library one could be moved out since we don't need to buy more net now, correct? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because that's I mean we want to make sure we have enough room to buy the new equipment um, for basically the opening of the new building, but obviously that's a couple of years away. So um, so that certainly could be could be kicked out then. Bob? Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, yes, we'd have labor savings, but actually, um, if there's there's a, a big benefit to having, not pissing off people who are applying for jobs, <laughs> um, having them, you know, just get get their information in and then it can be shared. So well, I meant labor both ways, Bob, but um, even, yeah. even the unpaid labor of someone trying to get a job. Sure. Because okay. People's time saving. <laughs> Yeah. On both ends, yeah. No. It's also it's also uh, public relations, and you know, making yeah. making the town more accessible. Yeah. And make it make it look like we're not crazy that we're collecting the same information twice, right? <laughs> you know, we already yeah. gave it to you. Yeah, the system we're we're running is going to expire and go away. So yeah, we're kind of forced into it. So I think that's it for our questions. So. Thank you very much for joining okay. us. Yeah, and, thank you. And the next I have on the list is fire. Um, and uh, you all, J Jeff, fire and ambulance um, are, anyway, whoever is speaking to our projects and you can, uh, you can talk to them in whatever order makes sense to you. We've sure. we've queued sure. them up and we've all had them to read. You've got you got got the so the summaries, correct? Yes. Okay, good. Good. So I mean we'll just go 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 through through it and add into that or 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 order. Um and we're gonna kind of jump jump back uh, back and forth between the three 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 of us. I mean the uh some some summaries are pretty much are pretty straight 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 four 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 right here. Uh, as you know, we we, we need to need to uh, replace 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 our supply fly hose. I mean that's an that's an on on go go going thing. Uh, supply fly hose for 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 our fire for our fire trucks. Uh, so, and and uh, and and then then we're 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 going to uh, down down the road re re replace replace our, our attack attack hose. Uh, thermal th th imaging cam cam cameras, of course. Uh, that's that's of course we can. Uh, we're trying to we're, we're replay play, play, placing equipment that's reaching end and end of life uh, again as 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 it's explained it gives 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 gives, gives this greater situation where 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 we're in added added at a fire in 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 in, in incident so uh, next our la uh Jeff do you do you want to speak speak to the our ambulance la laptop com com computers and and the uh Lucas devices Sure. Um, so the computers are what we use primarily to do our ambulance uh, patient care reporting. So each of our interactions with a patient requires a report, whether they get transported or refusal. So this year there was 4,300 4, uh, ambulance reports, and that's pretty standard. Uh, so the $15,000 is recurrent costs of keeping the uh, laptops up to date and current. And they, uh, they, Take a fair amount of use in the field and eventually they get worn out and break down and the cost of repairing them has not been uh, a worthwhile thing because computers eventually they all uh they lose they're kind of like a car coming off a lot they, they lose a lot of depreciation as soon as they get used so um, this is just part of our ongoing work with the ambulance service yes sir yeah sorry which project is this the ambulance laptop computers fifteen thousand dollars it's on page two of six. We might not. Have in our, I don't. That's not in our. In you the, might not have given. Oh, a, really? Oh, okay. Ah, sorry okay. about that. 
Thanks, Sarah. I was looking for that too. We we got individual ones as you had originally sent oh, them. Oh, okay. I thought, thought I thought thought you had to had uh, had I thought thought you had had to receive 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 receive. We this is the same. Uh, we we use the same same four 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 format that we did last 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 year, where we print print out a some some of the summary with fo photos and that. I th I thought thought you had had had. No, we didn't. Had, 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 if I can just no, jump we, in for a second, I yeah, do have Lindsay. this. If, I, if I'm allowed to share my screen. Oh, sure. I'll let yeah, you know. Yeah, you should. You should. We have these yeah. all in chronological order at, that they're listed on your spreadsheet, and we can okay. forward this to everybody later. I think it helps to have visuals whenever we talk a about it. Absolutely. We, and I just gave you permission to share your screen. All right, okay. cool. Let me pull this up for you. Uh, where are we here? We've got to get to what I want to actually show you. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, All right, so we talked about the hose and the cameras, yeah. and now we're on, uh, excuse me, this there, item there. here, the laptops. There you go. Yep. There you go. There we'll go. forward this yeah. to everybody after the meeting. Okay. All right, Jeff, you're on. These laptops are, you know, moderately rugged. Uh, they're not the mil-spec rugged ones we've bought in the past. Uh, they're similar to what the police department buys in, for some of their vehicles. And... Uh, so that's what we're asking for. That's last price time. Last time we bought these uh, early this year, I think it was $2,700, give or take a little bit. Um, and probably will be a price increase this year per, per laptop. Any other questions? So no, this, this is we, didn't, we didn't have that item, so yeah. Just confirming this is for the request is for three. Fifteen thousand should buy yeah. us closer to closer four. to five or four to five. Oh, four or five. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm yeah. taking minutes, so I'm trying to. Ah, no, that's okay. no problem. <laughs> All right. And Kathy, did you have a question too? Because I, I, they're both of you were speaking at the same time, and I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. No, no, it was just what Sarah pointed out. This wasn't even on our list originally. So, but I am glad to be. This is. Terrific, because we didn't receive this either. And so if you right. could send it to us afterwards, we'll make sure it's in the yeah, back. Sure. Kathy, well, well it's fun, fun, funny. The four, 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 four format that the town you, you, you uses now doesn't really allow allow us to, to you know, it allow, allows us to put a real, real short, short descriptive on each, 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 each of the, these things. But in year, years past, we've been able to include th this particular type a four 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 format in 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 there. So now we've, you know, we're we're kind of kind of locked locked in to what to what the, what the town you uses. And then you... this is, and then this this we bring 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 in to help kind of uh, flesh 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 out what what you you have. So it's perfect, and it, okay, um, you can always send it directly to a staff person the file, and then right if you just to see it beforehand. So it's great. Right. I, I, I do uh, that's the thing. I. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying I will send it to Athena and she can forward it to everybody. Yeah. yeah, I I just I just just thought 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 that we had sent 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 sent, sent it. You know, I I assume, assume that that we we that we we had, but that's all right. So, Kathy, right. it is on the original uh, spreadsheet that we got. Right. It just it, no. It just wasn't for. Just his wasn't in the package that we got. Okay. All right, Jeff. Um, and looking at this, there. Probably should have been a slight update on the CPR devices. I actually, um, when I put that in, was for seven. Um, so that number, I believe, is one hundred and forty-three thousand dollars. I'll go back and look, and that is for seven mechanical CPR devices. We currently have one of the CPR devices per each of the five ambulances, and they've gone past their ten-year service life. We use these devices when a patient is in cardiac arrest. Uh, they are particularly helpful. Um, as we transport and move people either from a house, uh, down a hallway, in an elevator, or even in the back of an ambulance, which allows us to do uh, high quality, consistent CPR at the correct timing and depth, um, even while driving across the roadway and then allow the uh, EMTs and the paramedics to maintain a safer posture as they go. Because otherwise, it meant physically standing over a patient and trying to do CPR often with one hand and hang on to something else. Um, the additional two that we're asking for are actually for adding to the two paramedic level engines we use. 
and those are our first response paramedic trucks. So there are times that that person is a one or two person uh, response while waiting for either mutual aid or another ambulance to come back from the hospital. Uh, so they are at times alone for a while. This CPR device has been uh, very useful and has been associated with a number of saves. One sure. one one thing I'll add I'll add that that just as a reminder when 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 we send send out our we call it emergency for for first response and EFR when when we send send that that out it's a paramedic low level uh piece of apparatus which which means that the the first personnel on board can deliver all all the a advanced life 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 support services with all with all with all the equipment that they they would need to deliver that the only only thing that that they can't can't do is trans 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 transport but we still put para paramedical level 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 service at at the <clears throat> excuse me at the side of the pay, 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 pay patient uh, in a time 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 timely fashion and at the same same time if that if that's the case we've all we've all already called for a mutual aid and 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 ambulance to 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 respond so uh, in the time it takes takes for that ambulance to get get there, we've provided 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 provide care, and we're ready, we're ready to hand hand off to to that rig when 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 it does it does arrive arrive on on scene. So I just want to make make sure that we did that didn't for, forget that piece. Deborah, I see you have your hand up. Yeah. So the form we have in our packet had a, the the project cost changed to $160,000. So can you okay. clarify the total number of devices and the total cost that you're requesting? It, it's seven devices and I'll go back to find my last quote. All right, um, the last updated quote I received on February 20th, which will actually be a better number than, than what I had originally is 156 319.08. So that's probably rounded up to 160 in this form. Yes, I mean, there's always the anticipation there'll be some kind of price bump, usually between the planning process of the doing the budget and the actual time of purchase on July 1st ish. Sure, thank you. Jeff, you go right right into into our mom monitors. Uh, uh, so the, mo the, the monitors are gotten moved. So, so we oh, initially well, I'm sorry. yeah, the, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right. So you you may see a document that includes two uh, replacement cardiac monitors. We've actually asked those to be moved to the FY twenty six uh, budget because it looks like the there is a new version of that monitor being uh, beta tested currently and is coming out and we're going to simply wait the extra year, year and a half to uh, make sure that that product is in fact doing what it's expected to do and, and providing the additional uh, patient care treatments that we're expecting. Yeah, Bob, Bob, bottom line, you don't want to buy the first year of a new, new, new mob, mob model while they work, work. And, and that's, and that's just, just the way it is. I mean, you, you just give, give, give them, them a chance to work out, kinks that are going to pop pop up with a new new model and then we get the quote quote unquote improves the version so that's that's why why that's why 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 it got pushed so yeah. lens i'll let, I'll let you i want you to you could chime in on, on the uh protective detective gear sure uh protective gear is one of those items uh that we've been asking for every year we consider it to be a yearly uh request <clears> for <throat> those that are new to the committee um this now up to fifty thousand because the prices have gone up is so we can keep an ongoing cycle of replacement for the protective gear that all of our firefighters wear they have a maximum of a 10-year lifespan based on national standards possibly less based on use um, and this is for our full-time career and student firefighters this amount of money enables us to replace 10 to 15 sets a year which uh, develops a cycle 
of a 10-year uh, replacement plan for each set of gear. Uh, one thing I would add that we're doing behind the scenes you don't see here uh, is two things. There's a push in the fire service um, to limit the amount that firefighters wear this gear. It's kind of an odd situation that all firefighter gear has PFAS in it, which are believed to be cancer-causing. Um, you cannot buy any turnout gear currently that does not have that in it. So it just doesn't exist yet. It will someday. So the movement in the fire service is to have our firefighters wear this gear the least amount of time as possible. Obviously, they have to wear it if they're going in to fight a fire in a building. But there's so many other things they do, non-fire training, car accidents, medical calls, even brush fires, um, where they don't need to be wearing the structural gear. So they now have come out with something called non-structural gear. Looks almost identical, but it doesn't have all the layers of protection in it to go into a fire, and it has no PFAS in it. So the move in the fire service is to have two sets of gear for each firefighter, one that they wear if they're actually potentially going into a building to fight a fire, and another set they wear for everything else. So through a uh, grant from the fire marshal's office, we are buying about 30 sets of this gear already, the non-structural to start working towards getting every member the non-structural gear. Uh, this request for the 50,000 is to continue to buy the structural gear because we have to maintain that cycle. But I just want to let you know that that's going on behind the scenes. Anna has her hand up on this one. It's it's really just a comment um, that it's, it's wild to me that they have not come up with an alternative yet at this point. That feels... Um, nuts and uh then i'm glad that grants are available for the um the other gear and i appreciate y'all going out and and getting those so thank you thank you yeah the alternative you know yeah you're talk talking about with the alternative 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 to the gear that has the p p p, p, p fast in, in in it that's that's what, what you're refer, 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 referring to yeah is that what you were yeah. said you said that there was yeah. funding available for that from yeah. the state yeah, well, and the other the other piece of this, it's just in the last couple of years that the, that they've found that that, that, that right. that's an issue, issue. So it takes it sometimes takes the, the industry a while to kind of come up come up with with, with an alternative turn to turn to turn turn because it it has been so oh. ubiquitous. Ubi 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 so, but the thing thing is. Uh, this this type type of non structural structural gear uh, has been out out been out been out, oh. out out there for a while. Usually, it's used used for uh, urban search, search, search and rescue res, 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 type 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 work. And they're finding that you know this this can 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 be used in another type of non uh, structural fire fire firework. So it's beginning. It's 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 evolving evolving. You know, it's coming, 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 it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming to bear, bear now. So, and then, like anything else, some sometimes those things move too, 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 too slow, 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 yeah. slowly. But, but we, we were able to, uh, you know, jump, jump on uh, the opportunity to, to, to use, use a grant to uh, get to at least, 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 least begin to. Uh, you know, to obtain the, uh, that that type 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 of gear, so folks folks folks, folks won't be exposed 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 to that that those those uh, those possible car car syndicates over over a longer period 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 of time. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, this is this will be be a a Jeff Jeff thing. Yep, so this is a EMS uh, IV infusion pump. Basically, it's a medication pump. Uh, more and more of the medications that are available to us, uh, according to our statewide treatment protocols, are requiring the use of a pump, which gives us a uh, more specific uh, treatment dosing for the patients. And we're looking for seven total of these, five for the ambulance and two for the two uh, paramedic level engines. I would add, Jeff, I didn't include it on this list here. This would come out at EMS receipts also, correct? Yeah, this would be certainly a viable EMS receipts item, um, as would the uh, Lucas devices. Um, so both of those are very applicable to that. Sarah? Yeah, tell me again, who is who is requiring that you use these devices rather than administered by hand? The state. The state. The state. 
the state office of emergency medical services oh. is pushing more and more of the medications that are available to us. They haven't mandated it yet, uh -huh. um, but ultimately it's just good patient care. Um, and really the difference between the two is that one of our medics, if I was doing a, uh, an infusion, a drip that you might see if you were in a hospital, they, all of theirs are plugged into a pump and they are very specific in how they, they give those. We give those by watching and counting numbers of drips, calculating a flow based on volume and concentration and all those things. So we're going to try to let technology make us a better at what we do and do patient, better patient care. I think one one of the hall hall hallmarks of this depart part department is that they they've always been you know, looked down 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 the road to see what what's what's kind of, kind of coming and what's 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 at the at the cutting edge and that's and that's and that's and that's, and that's one one good thing and it, and the other side side of this is that at some some point this will be a man a man man a man mandate. So it's trying, trying, trying to stay, stay ahead of the, ahead of the, ahead of the curve, ahead of, ahead of where, 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 in, in front of where the state, state, state is, is going, and staying out in front in terms of pay, 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 pay patient care. That again, I, I've, I've always, I've always been impressed by the, that. That's one of the things that that this, this, this department is really, really good, good, good at. For 30. Lindsay, this is your your bit, your bit baby. Huh, okay. Uh, and the police <laughs> department. So this item here, um, I can't have the whole thing on the screen at once. I'll just go to the one with the photos. Um, obviously, this is a big ticket item as things go. Um, this is a replacement essentially of the infrastructure and the what we call the subscriber units, the units in the field. Um, I want to make it clear this is both a police and fire joint venture. Um, there's two components to this. The first component is replacing the infrastructure. So we're talking about the base stations for both police and fire, both departments, although on different radio systems, one VHF, one UHF. Uh, most of our base stations are co-located. So there are places like Mount Lincoln, the North Fire Station, uh, soon the Tower Library, UMass, et cetera. Um, those devices, which you see pictured bottom left there, that's an example of a base station. Um, those are now end of life, according to our vendor, meaning you cannot buy parts for them. There's, they have to scavenge parts to keep them running. And we have had a couple failures over the last year that Doug Geary and I deal with for our respective departments. So they've informed us that they can't tell us how much longer they're going to be able to keep those base stations going. So the first half of this is to replace those stations, but as part of that, we are also looking at improving our coverage. Both police and fire do have gaps, parts of town where we have poor reception, primarily from portable radios. We paid for uh, studies, covered studies this past summer. So Goosetown Communications, which is our radio vendor, they came out, uh, they did studies, they did mapping of what our current sites are providing coverage and recommendations for adding, deleting, changing sites. So we have all those site maps. Based on that, they are, they've given us recommendations as to where our base station should be. We don't have a single one. We have multiple sites listening throughout the town for our people out in the field. So we have that new plan as to where radios should be. Um, and they've given us obviously a quote for what it would cost both to replace these aging units and to improve the system to maximize our coverage around town. The second part of this, the proposal is to replace the subscriber units where essentially the mobile radios and the portable radios are out in the field or in the cars and in firefighter and police officers' hands. Uh, some of those are already new in both departments, but many of them are old and need to be replaced. We've been slowly doing some of them over the last few years. If you look at your capital plans for the last couple of years, we are proposing that any future radios, portables and mobiles that are purchased be what we call tri-band, which means that they are VHF, UHF, and 800 megahertz. And the reason for that is more and more all the agencies surrounding us are on these different bands. Uh, Franklin County has gone strictly 800 megahertz. Northampton is about to go 800 megahertz. Places like us in Hadley, Belchtown continue to be VHF, UMass is UHF. So to have interoperability, the ability for everybody to hear and talk to everybody else, 
uh, the, the standard these days really is to have tri-band radios. Um, so we're also, that's part of our proposal. So this as listed would replace for the 1.9 million would replace the infrastructure and all the necessary subscriber units uh, for both police and fire. Um, I know that someone had mentioned leasing earlier, I think in the IT conversation, they do offer a leasing option for this equipment. I don't know if the town is willing to entertain that. I do have some prices on that if um, the committee of Sandy wants to look at that. I do have that available. Yeah. Uh, Eugene, you know, I, I'm going to wait for everyone else and I'll call on myself if you don't ask it. So uh, Eugene, then Bob. I just had a, a quick question. It, it, is a, it is a big ticket item, but it seems super necessary. What happens to all the old equipment? Does that have any market value? Is that something that could be sold for other or to other departments that maybe don't have the capital and need to actually scavenge? If you could talk to a little bit about the disposition of the old equipment. Sure. Um, as a general rule, the answer is no. Um, you know, we, we run it to, like I said, end of life. So the base stations... Um, really have no value um, other than some parts might get scavenged by the vendor for, you know, another department that's limping along. The mobiles and portables, we typically run pretty much to end of life. Also, there might be a very small trade in value there. And that's something we would certainly look to negotiate with the vendor when we uh, do the upgrade, if they'll give us a trade in value for some of the equipment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh I would like to to see um, the um, the lease um, expenses over time. I know it's probably more than 1.9 million over five years, but it might be more doable for the town to to expend the you know do the expenditures at a lower level for 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 five years. But then, when I send this summary that we're looking at now to Athena, I'll include that simple, great, pretty great. short, simple spreadsheet. It's got that number on it. I great. will send it along as well. Thank you. So I, I'm I'm going to follow up on Bob. So on the lease, after if you spread it over five years, do we own it after five? And I'm just going to pull that up right here, just so we have it in front of us. So um, the answer to your question is uh, yes, I believe we do own it. I'd want to check the parameters of that with the vendor because we've never actually done that before. Um, but if you look at this here. This gives you a rough breakdown of the cost. You'll see the top line is infrastructure. So that's about half the total cost of this proposal. Then the mobiles and portables are about the other half. Off to the right there, you'll see the leasing figure they gave us, um, at least for the infrastructure. And I'll, I'll include this along when I send it to Athena. Okay. And my, my second question is your, uh, you've got a system with, portables that works for two large departments. Would it make make any sense that um, for the other public safety group we have, CRESS, to be on the same system in, in terms of radio frequency? And I don't know how much that requires a separate linkage to the base, or is that just the mobile units? Um, so it's a, a, CRESS was not mentioned in terms of um, coordinating this. And I know the dispatch, dispatch system is going to be increasingly dispatching to the group. So that is my question. Sure. So a couple of things I'll say to that. It's it's somewhat of a complex technical answer. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's a good question. Um, the biggest issue would say putting Cress on, quote, this system would be they would need uh, their own channel or frequencies, and those you have to get from the FCC. So when, when Crest started going back a ways, it was looking at, can they be on the police system? Can they be on the fire system? Due to call volume and logistics, it was decided that no, they really couldn't just jump on either one of our frequencies is more the issue than the system. Um, so as we replace this system, technically, could there be a VHF or a UHF frequency that Crest used? Yes. Um, but we would have to get those from the FCC and that is increasingly difficult and the bigger issue is you would need a base station, all the places we currently have police and fire base stations to listen throughout town for our signals. You would have to have another radio listening for the Crest channel, if that makes sense. So you basically, instead of having one 
two base stations, you need three for every location. So it'd be a huge uh, cost increase. What we actually did for the Crest program, uh, myself and Doug, Geer, um, Doug Geary and um, Bill Glover from IT worked on this. Um, there, we settled on a first net push to talk system, which is really a, a cellular based system. And honestly, that has worked phenomenally well for them. It has great coverage. It's inc uh, incredibly less expensive, both for the devices. There is a monthly subscription fee. And although I can't speak directly for the Crest team, I think the communication piece of their puzzle is working quite well. Um, so th it's probably not cost effective to try to put them onto a radio system, given what they have now that's working very well. And I'll and I'll try to try and chime in, and you know, I'm doing a lot, a lot of work work with with Crest. The presence system that they have, uh, communications is, is, is system is it is it is it is it is it is work, work, working, you know, uh, and 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 it should should work 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 for the work well for the for CC future. So, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I just um, I have a question about the base stations and 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 the where, where I started out was um I think it would be great over time if we could have agreements so that we'd all be on the same system you know everybody would be on Northampton system or whatever every in other words we wouldn't have separate systems UMass police fire um but would that still require a separate um, base station for police versus fire, or could you, if you were to have only one system, would you be able to reduce the number of base stations? Um, the, the only way you could reduce it is if we went to what's called an 800 megahertz um, trunk system, which is what Northampton is doing. Um, then basically you put in one system that has multiple channels that are shared back and forth behind the scenes um that is doable you're talking you know a few million dollar system for that um we briefly discussed that with our vendor and given our needs uh for v for fire for vhf for distances we decided that wasn't really doable and the police had their reasons they didn't think that was an effective way to go um and by what i mean by that is you know we're sending ambulances down to bay state in Springfield and up to uh, Franklin County to uh, Bay State Franklin Franklin Medical. Um, so we need long distances. There's also some issues about using 800 megahertz for fire ground operations uh, with firefighters in the building versus VHF. So an 800 megahertz system, which would be a massive rebuild, you would basically every single piece of radio equipment we have right now, base stations, mobiles, portables, pagers, would be obsolete. We would have to start from scratch with every single piece of equipment. So the price tag would be enormous. Um, so th this solution here, the, UH, the police are overall happy with UHF. We're happy with VHF buying the tri-band radios where we can in fact talk to any other department with the right programming um, with the solution that we settled on. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. You know, and I'll, and I'll you know, I'm, I'm not, not the, Radio guy, the little 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 Lindsay is an eight eight hundred hundred meg is a great great system and all that, but I I I always have a fear when you have a single point of fail 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 failure. That's that that always scares 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 me, you know. So that's another reason why to have you know separate systems because if. I mean, if if the big big one comes, you can all. There are times where you could you could come in and and, and share some some someone else's is, 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 is system, but that's just a it's a, it's just a, a thing a thing a thing with with me. So. Anyone else? <clears throat> Excuse me, L Lindsay. On when you send this in with the lease price, could you also confirm that after that amount of time we'd own it? Yes. As, okay, thank you. I will forward this immediately to Athena today, but then I'll get the answer to that and pass it on to her. Okay, thank you very much. I believe the police department, when they do their presentation, which I don't think we've had yet, they'll talk about this also, obviously, from their standpoint. Are there any other... You... Oh, right, did that ends your, your piece. No, we have one more. Yeah, one uh, more. Okay, yeah. go for leaves. Okay. Yep. 
Do you excuse me. Talk about this, or do you want me to? Yeah, I, I'll I'll try try and try, chime in, but yeah, this is this is this is yours. Okay, um, so this is uh to purchase another hybrid. We purchased our first hybrid uh, two years ago. Um, this is to replace a two thousand seven Ford five hundred. Um, that's actually off the road right now because it wouldn't pass state inspection. That's the car on the left. The car on the right is just an example of what we would be purchasing. Uh, state contract uh, with APD's help. They're the ones that buy a lot of these. Um, we have a, we basically have six staff vehicles in the department. Um, three are assigned to the chief officers, myself, Jeff, and the chief. Um, then we have one fire, fire prevention officer, which is a hybrid and 09 escape. And then the captain at each station has one when they're on duty. Um, so the one at the North station is out of service now. That's the tor to the, uh, 2007 Ford 500. Our proposal would be another hybrid uh, Explorer uh, to put into the mix um, and replace that vehicle that's currently off the road. And when we do something like this, typically uh, the vehicle, the newer vehicle would go to one of the chief officers and then it would be a hand me down to the, uh, the captains at the station. We've had good luck so far with the 09 Escape, knock on wood. And Jeff currently has our first hybrid Explorer, which Jeff, I think, is working out okay for us. Yeah, it's worked very well. Any questions? Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry, um, I was a little further from my mute button than I wanted to be. Can you talk to me about the decision to go hybrid versus fully electric? Is it because of charging infrastructure or was there another reason um, in terms of the vehicle choice that you needed? Um, honestly, we're following along in the footsteps of APD. They, you know, they're buying these and we tag along on what they're buying. Um, we have not looked heavily into the all, all electric and I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I can't even tell you if the all electric Explorer is available or not. No, 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 it's not. It's not, it's not yet. No. So I think my question is because APD often, I, I will, FYI, Gabe, I'll be asking you the same question. Um, but I think the answer that we typically get from APD is that their cars are, requ are required to have some level of crash rating um, that there aren't electric cars that have yet or something something along those lines. I'm seeing I'm seeing another APD person nodding at me. So maybe I got that one right. Um, I, I can answer but, that question if you need to. That's okay. I, I'm going to ask it to you in, in five minutes. So Okay. Um, but I, I think my question is, does the fire department have a similar requirement or is there a reason why Ford Explorers are your vehicle of choice beyond beyond just that that's what the fire, the police department does? Um, they're definitely oh. our vehicle of choice. And that's for a, a variety of reasons. We used to use the sedans like the Ford 500 we're purchasing. Mm -hmm. um, and we ran we run into two issues. The you know, we bring all our turnout gear with us and other com uh, equipment for fire scene command. So mm -hmm. the back of a, on a vehicle like an Explorer has the space for that. Uh, the other thing about the Explorers is because they are used so widely in the fire and police services, the um, you know light bars, the center consoles for radios, everything is by and large sold for that. You can buy them for other vehicles or have them custom made, but mm -hmm. that's the platform of choice these days in public safety. So there's a cost and efficiency savings to have them outfitted when you put the radios in, the lights in, the sirens in, et cetera because so many agencies, you know, from the state police to police to fire are using uh, this vehicle. The other thing, the all electric conceptually, we're certainly not against. Um, one issue you do run into on all electric, as you know, is charging stations. Yep. Now you're looking at needing charging stations at the fire station. In the case of the chief officers where we do take them home, now we'd be looking at charging stations at our homes and you right. get into a whole nother venue of how that's going to work who's going to pay for it um which i have heard some other agencies talk about and honestly mm -hmm. it's sort of a quagmire i'm not sure we want to get into right now and the other the other piece piece too is uh we 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 use we use use these these vehicles as a mobile command 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 post mm -hmm. so you're at a at a scene you're not you're no, you're no no nowhere near to charge char, charging station and and the, these can be some long long term in 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 the incidents and you've got all and you've got got your quick 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 equipment to run or run in an, an incident and you know the the uh uh, the, the the items you're using that's a big that can be a very 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 big power 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 draw, and that and and you know you want want to be be able to depend on 
on on on on your vehicle to use as your command 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 post over over a long long a long long period 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 of time. The last thing you want to be concerned concerned about is is, is oh, am I going to run out or run out or run out or run out run out of power 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 at a say a critical time or whatever long long term. So and that's and that's one of one of the the other reasons. I mean, I I think high 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 hybrid is the way way to go. That mu it's sort of six of one half a dozen of another another another. It's getting to where we 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 should should be, but in my in my experience and what I I've seen, the you know the all electric type. Type type vehicle that 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 we we need. It's it's not there yet. I'm sure down 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 the road it will 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 be. But I think go going high 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 hybrid is 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 way 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 to go go right 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 now. It's you know it's crawl walk run. So I hear you. Um, I I will say, and this might just be me. I do not buy the argument about range because I think that when we're looking at an average daily range of 250 miles, I guess. If y'all are covering 250 miles in a day in one vehicle, I, I'm impressed. Hang on, hang on, Chief. But I think that the, I think what I would ask of you is to consider this as like in your long, long range planning on vehicles. I do think this is the direction we're going. I'm not saying it's this year. I'm not saying it's even in the next three years, but I think that this is a direction that I would love this department to consider as you're thinking about long-term planning for this type of vehicle specifically. I'm no, not, it, not talking about this year, hybrid's fine. I think I just wanted to plant that seed for y'all. Well. Yeah, but I but I said I said I think that this is the way to go. All the level level electric at some point. I said 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 that that that, that down <laughs> down down range. That is the way 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 to go, and that's why I said crawl walk run. We're get Absolutely. get get we're get 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 getting there, and it's not. And what what I what I was talking ta ta talking about was not about range. I I was talking talk, talk about sustained sustained sustainability for our equipment on the scene during an in in in, 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 in incident. If you're talk, talking about range, you can find find charge 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 charging stations stay, stay, stations all over the place. What I'm what I'm talking about is if we're at a scene which doesn't have 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 one. You want to be you want to have uh, you be be able to depend on your quick equipment still being uh, 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 operational for a long-term event. Yeah, so it's, oh no, it's drawing on power. So it's drawing down. The I understand. I, I do understand that. I, I think that it's, I, I do think that comparison could be made to running out of gas, right? I, I, I think that it's a, it's a valid question to ask when we get to that point. And I look forward to the run phase of that um, process. That's great. Any other yeah. questions on this? Um, you know, my question originally was about <coughs> the price me. tag, but I understand what you're getting is something that has all the other pieces added to it already. It's not just a car, but it's a car with sirens and radios and and a, a lot of other. Sarah. Yeah, um, the estimated life is 10 years. I'm I'm hoping that's pessimistic because that's a lot of money for... I mean, vehicles should be lasting a lot longer that than that these days. So, yeah. Well, to that end, um, like I said, we are replaced in an 07 Ford 500. Um, so obviously, we got uh, 15 or more Seven, years, 17 years um, mm -hmm. out of that. And on the Explorer packages, technically, are a little bit beefier vehicle, being an SUV. Um, so yes, I would hope you're right about that that we would get closer to 12 to 15 years or so out of it, at right, least. Thank you. Oh, no. I have a question for Sandy. Um, Sandy, do you have a vehicle list for us by any chance? I was going to say, I don't think I saw it in the packet, but if I missed it, that's on me. No, it's not in the packet okay. yet. Um, I worked on it <coughs> Excuse me. today thinking I could get it done in an hour, and I was not able to. So I do not have a, uh, a list, um, although I am getting closer to it. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. That informs my um, any other questions I might have. So no worries. Thank you. Thank you. So I suggest we move to police unless there are any other questions on this set. And we can thank the people from Fire EMS who don't need to be here for the police. If you would like to leave, 
you can. No, no you're problem. you're welcome to stay as well. All right. No, thanks, thank, thank, thanks, thank, thanks again, again for how 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 we pre, 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 pre appreciate the time. So, all right. Thank you very much, and, right. and Take... thank you. I thought it was very helpful to get the the pictures and the long absolutely, description. absolutely. So thank absolutely. you for providing that. All right, no problem. Thank you. Stay and eavesdrop for a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they want to make sure I ask that same question to the police. They're like, don't hold us to that different standard. I'm just kidding. Right. Well, he's going to help oh, you bail me out. That's okay. what we do all the time, pal. <laughs> so, so, so you, you all are up and you can, uh, I don't know whether you brought something to present. We did see the short list, of, you know, the several sentences that came in with the requests from the original sheet. So it's up to you to figure out which order you want to present these. So I can chime in. Um, you have that brief list, and I figured that, uh, that it'd be better if we discussed them, each item. Uh, unfortunately, the fire department showed us up with uh, bringing nice photos and whatnot. <laughs> and I'm going to steal that from them for next time around. Um, <clears throat> but we do want to, uh, if you have that list in front of you, uh, originally that list had eight items, I believe. A couple of those uh, items were scratched out because, um, uh, from my understanding, the capital requests need to be over 10000 and those requests did not fall within those guidelines, so they're, they've been scratched out. Um, but I will talk about, I did bring along a couple of our subject experts, which is Officer Doug Geary and Captain Ron Young, and they will be able to chime in on some of these to be able to give you uh, um, the best accurate picture of what we're looking at. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is our hybrid vehicles. And I, obviously that's uh, something that uh, was just discussed with the fire department. So I think we'll be able to answer some of those questions as well. And um, I am going to turn that over to Doug Geary to kind of provide us with an explanation in terms of what we're requesting for that. Doug? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, usually we're on a replacement cycle for uh, usually three cars every year. And then on that fourth year, we do uh, a fourth vehicle, so three, three, four. So we were pretty much on that schedule all the way up until fiscal year 21, which was going to be a four-car year. And obviously COVID hit and everything in capital was canceled. So we were uh, put behind four cars in, a, in that replacement year. Uh, Chief Livingstone, the following year when we uh, when we re-engaged capital, um, it would turn back into a three-car year uh, for the following years for 22, 23, and 24. So to make up for those, he had requested four cars for each one of those years, of which in 22, we did get four. 23, we did get four. And then, or 23, we got four. And then 24, we requested four. And then that got reduced to three. So from the zero year in, in fiscal year 21, um, we're basically down three vehicles in our replacement cycle. So due to that, we definitely have, uh, I'm just referring to my notes, one, two, three, four, five, six vehicles that are exceeding well over 100,000 miles and are definitely not reliable vehicles as we should need them. We actually had one of these vehicles responding to a head-on uh, motor vehicle crash a couple weeks ago. The car failed and uh, stopped running and uh, that officer couldn't respond to that call. So we had to have a district car from another farther away district respond to that. So it definitely is affecting our response due to not having um, reliable cars. That was one of our older ones. We do have two hybrid patrol response vehicles right now, and they've been running great, um, definitely doing their job. Uh, we do have uh, one, two, three, I think we have four uh, patrol or uh, admin hybrid vehicles, and they've been working great. So to add on to the, the hybrid technology with uh, police vehicles. Ford is really the only manufacturer that has made a police, you can't really call it just police, a, a heavy duty public safety use vehicle. That's the reason why the, uh, the fire department wants to use them. 
because they're built with a purpose. Uh, they're heavy duty motors, heavy duty brakes, heavy duty alternator, uh, heavy duty hybrid battery. Um, and like I like the chief said from the fire department, we are kind of in the crawl stage right now. We're not in a run because hybrid technology for public safety vehicles has not met the standard yet for public safety use. There are some out there that say they are, but they're not. I know hybrid or uh, Northampton police bought a hybrid Ford hybrid pickup truck. They used it for a short period of time and the battery life did not last. They ended up giving it to their, um, to some other department within town. And it, it's, again, it spends a lot of time on the charger and not as much time on the road. So for a public safety approach, this is a, a, a safer approach, but we're definitely embracing uh, electric vehicle technology as it as it applies um, to public safety as when that moment becomes available. So uh, another problem we're having is um, when the hybrid vehicle technology came out for police vehicles, obviously the price jump was significant. Um, it, it basically went up by. Twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars because this was brand new technology, and the problem is now since COVID and supply chain issues and the high demand for hybrid technology throughout the nation and out the world, batteries are at a at a very high premium right now to get. So as every year has gone up, the prices have gone up, and we're up to with. Our cars are have multiple technology lights, radio, siren, um, portable battery chargers, in-car video systems, uh, mobile data computers, radar units. So we have a high demand for electric current in our cars. So again, if we had all electric, that wouldn't last very long, especially if we were at an emergency scene. So these hybrid cars are really uh, they're working. They're not flawless. We, I do have some. We have a, a significant amount of issues, but they're they've been resolved. Um, but definitely would not be able to do an all electric vehicle anytime soon. So as I said, the prices have increased. Um, when we first started this back in uh, the first car was in 2020. Uh, it was around sixty five thousand dollars, and that was even short because I didn't even have correct figures at the time because it was such new technology. It bumped up, we're up to like 80, 85,000 or 80,000. And now Ford is telling us that the price is gonna go up again due to a hybrid battery shortage. So if we wanna stay with the hybrid battery or hybrid police vehicles, that price is gonna increase. I know it's up to $90,000 per vehicle, the 320. Um, that's just to make sure that if we're going to stick with hybrid vehicle technology, that we have enough money to buy them. Because if we come up short, then I'm scrambling to find out how we're going to pay for the difference. Also, another issue is, is we usually trade in our vehicles. So I try to maintain our vehicles to a high standard. So when they trade in, they get a high trade in value. Um, due to COVID, we've held on to these cars a lot longer than we've needed to. So they're older in model year and they're higher in mileage. So typically cars that I would get three or four or $5,000 for are now around 2000 to $1,500 because of that delayed in purchase time. And it's it's been a really ch tough challenge. I know with the Crest vehicles, we ordered, tried to get Crest cars for Crest. That took me almost a year and a half just to get plug-in hybrid Ford escapes because the demand was so high for hybrid technology. And luckily I got that was able to, to secure some. So we're, I'm still waiting on cars that I ordered back in fiscal year 21 for 22. They're just starting to come in now um, and be built to arrive from Ford and starting to be built at the upfitter. So it's, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, definitely up to the challenge to, to maintain the hybrid um, uh, technology, obviously, for for the cause and the green communities uh, issue we have here in town. So again, like I said, the $90,000 or the $320,000 seems a lot higher. 
I'm just trying to project a buffer in case the prices get higher that we have the money to buy them as opposed to undercutting them and then we go to buy them and then we have to figure out how to how to purchase those. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yep. sure. Sure. Thank you. Um, so the the submittal I'm looking at says four vehicles for three hundred twenty thousand dollars. So that's right. eighty eighty thousand dollars each. Are you saying? Oh. You would like ninety to be sure. Well, yeah, excuse. I must. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I updated my uh, my uh, my numbers here. Yeah, so it should be ninety. I'm sorry. So three sixty. Yes, three sixty. And are these patrol vehicles? So, so the majority of these are will be patrol vehicles. Um, some of them will, will replace some of our admin cars and we do based upon the condition of the vehicles at the time, um, I make a decision on what cars have the highest, um, uh, need to be replaced in regards to reliability and safety. So currently, uh, we have two canine officers that have patrol, uh, dogs, they're both of their vehicles. One of them is a 2015 Ford Explorer, non-hybrid, just a gas. And he's up at 134,000 miles right now. And the thing that worries me about them is that their cars idle a lot because to keep the dog either cool or warm, but depending on the, on the, uh, on the weather. And their engine hours are huge. So right now they're gas, so it's burning straight gas. If they have a hybrid, the hybrid to gas running is usually a, a one third to two thirds. It's usually two thirds in hybrid mode battery and one third in gas, which basically acts as a generator to recharge the battery to go back in hybrid mode. So that one, 2015 is already got, has 134,000. And we have another one that's a 2018. He's already up to about 105,000. So my, my concern is that at least these two vehicles, I know I want to replace because there's obviously a lot at stake here with with an animal being in the in the vehicle, and then we have some standard replacements with some other uh, other vehicles of of which ones at one eighteen, and other ones at one ten, and other ones at one fifteen. So these vehicles are also out of warranty at this point, so any repairs are straight out of pocket, where they're warrantied up to a hundred thousand miles. So. Probably eight out of 10 repairs I make are usually covered under warranty, the big ticket items. The little stuff is little, but the big ticket items, motor, transmission, emissions, any of that kind of stuff is covered under that warranty. And that's why Ford um, is big in the, in, the, in the public safety hybrid vehicle market. Uh, so I see Anna and Bob. Um, so, okay, two questions. First off, uh, there was... Uh, something happening outside my house last night and my dog clearly had aspirations of being a uh, canine officer because she or you call the dogs canine officers anyway uh, she her head was fully out the window staring down those cars um, my one of my questions is that there are certainly many benefits to switching to hybrid or electric vehicles um, for the environment but one of the other benefits hypothetically is cost savings on gas um, and I'd love to hear if you have any data on since switching to hybrid vehicles, if there have been cost savings in that in that effect. Um, so that's question one, which hopefully is, is simple. Either, yes, you have them and you can tell me or not, no, not yet. And then my other question is um, in 2022, uh, East Hampton started buying Teslas. And uh, it's been a couple years since East Hampton has bought Teslas. And they also have bought, I think, a Mustang that was fully electric. And I'd love to hear, I am, I'd like to be very clear. I am not pitching. I do not want us to be buying Teslas, um, but I would like to hear if you know anything about how that has worked for them. And I believe the reason I'm asking is I believe that they bought it with the intent of it being the primarily the parking enforcement, not kind of one of the regular fleet, fleet vehicles in that sense. Um, but I'd love to hear if you know how that is working. Um, again, I am not proposing it, mostly asking from your expertise. If, I'll, if you I'll take a Tesla. Anna. I specifically <laughs> said I was not I should have said I'm not getting uh Captain Tang or, or 
chief. I'll take the Mustang. Uh, interim chief. I don't know what to call you anymore. I'm not going to gave a Tesla, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, but I am curious if you've got any thoughts. So I, I remember when East Hampton uh, went to the Teslas, uh, Chief Livingstone did come to me and talk to me about that. Um, I don't know if they were in a moment where they had to buy electric because somebody said they had to buy electric. Um, okay. They did. I know that the chief is assigned one. There you go, Gabe. <laughs> and, and the detective bureau has one. Um, the Mustang is new to me. I don't, I haven't talked to anyone recently, so I didn't know if they got a, a Mustang Mach-E and what they're using it for. Um, they do, they, Ford says the, the Mach-E is, they can, you can use it for police work. Um, the problem I see with it, A, is, um, it's not purpose built for police work. So it's, it's again, just a civilian use car, mm -hmm. um, the difficulty is too is that the, the equipment you need to put in these cars isn't always specific to that vehicle like mm -hmm. they do for the for the Ford Explorer, um, so it's difficult in that way. And the warranties for this don't aren't like the ones for the police vehicle. So the police vehicle has that five year one hundred thousand mile warranty, where these are three years thirty six miles bumper to bumper and maybe to seventy on like the powertrain. So then you start rolling the dice here if you start, because these are basically rolling computers. Right. It's a computer with two electric motors wrapped in a shell of metal or aluminum, or whatever you want to call it. So when they go bad, they go really bad, really, really quick. So if you don't have that warranty, now you're shelling out the big money to figure out why it doesn't work. Another Thanks. reason the Teslas, and I brought this up to Chief Livingstone, was the Teslas, again, they don't really make police equipment for Teslas. So you have to do all this weird creative stuff to retrofit it. Mm -hmm. Again, Tesla doesn't say, hey, this is this is a police certified vehicle. Right. And we're going to warranty it if you have a problem, because then you'll have a problem. They'll come back and say, well, all the radios and the radar units and the computers are causing your problem. Now you're up in the air like, OK, well, it's really is it really that or not they use it as an excuse where ford says this is a purpose-built vehicle designed to take all this electronic equipment and, and also part of this too is ford says that the ford explorer police interceptor is certified for pursuit rated and i know pursuit is not a good word what basically what's that saying is it's designed to go faster and drive drive it at, at a higher performance than your average Ford Explorer. So if you bought a Ford Explorer at your dealership, its suspension, its motor, its brakes aren't the same. So the safety component of that, uh, the police rated one is has all that equipment. And like you mentioned before, it has a rear impact rating of 75 miles an hour. So if that officer is sitting on the side of the road and somebody runs into the back of them, that car is going to absorb that energy before it's going to significantly hurt that officer. And we've all seen the pictures on the news, especially with the state police of cars getting hit from behind. If you opened up the back of that car and opened up the floor, there's they put these extra metal cross beams in the rear of the car to absorb that where the, a regular Explorer doesn't have that, nor would a Tesla, nor would a Mustang. I think... It's, it's interesting to have East Hampton as a test case, even though, again, it's not something that I'm certainly not something I would be proposing. Um, but I think it's interesting to have East Hampton as a test case specifically when it comes to questions around, um, I, I say range, meaning including idling time. Um, I do think that that would be a, a good question to ask in terms of their usage of those vehicles as we look forward um, to many years down the road if, if we're getting to a point of, of running. Um, and then, yeah, my other question was um, ga uh, savings on, on gas, if you know of that. So we haven't really done a gas assessment yet, because like I said, we got our first one in fiscal year 20 into 21. So basically, we wanted to build a few years of gas um, data and take a look and see how um, the usage between our current gas fleet and our current hybrid fleet and kind of compare what they were uh, replaced by. So you had our previous gas vehicles and we want to and see that. So we're gonna definitely pull that data from the fire department at some point here 
and try to see where our fuel savings is. I don't know the cost. Uh, Captain Young deals with the finances in regards to the fuel, so he might be able to shed some light on uh, if we've spent more money in fuel, less money, or what have you. So, yeah, um, definitely you something I, I'm interested in myself. Thank you. I know you had said two thirds hybrid, one third gas. And so I was curious about the savings given that uh, approximate um, usage percentage. Thank you. Right. Uh, I, would love, and, I would love to know that um, even if it's not an exact price breakdown, I think it'd be helpful to know the usage roughly. If, if that's Definitely. Something. I'm curious myself. And one thing with the Teslas too. The, so the chief and the detectives, they usually have a couple lights and a radio. They usually yeah. have nothing else in their car. It's pretty simple. Okay. So it's going to be hard for me to compare a patrol use vehicle Super fair. To, a very, to a very um, simple design in regards to how we set those cars up. And one other thing I, I want to just add while we're on it, um, with Teslas, there's no repair facility. So if you need to fix a Tesla, you have to go out in Eastern Mass somewhere far deep out in, yeah. in the 495, 128 loop area because yeah. they're so prevalent there. We're here. We don't even have a dealership here. So when I deal with Ford, Ford actually has a dedicated uh, mechanical division just for police public mm -hmm. safety vehicles in the Worcester area, which is only an hour drive from me. And, right. and the turnaround time on repairs is extremely quick, sometimes the same day based upon any issues. Yeah. So if the Tesla, we did that, it'd be a, a total nightmare for anyone to, anyone to have to try to fix or repair those cars. Thanks. If you have any other feedback from East Hampton folks, just generally less less Tesla specific, more just electric specific, I'm, I'd am i love to hear. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. So yep. No, I see Bob's hand is up. There were two others, but maybe they're not up anymore. Bob. Yeah, I just got a little confused about how many vehicles you'll need each year. Uh, if you could give us a, you know, a spreadsheet to show, you know, when you order them, when you get them, whether it's a patrol car or a chief car, you know, that would be very helpful to see the picture over five years. Sure. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, I think we can move on to the next project. Okay, uh, so the second that second uh, item that we have uh, on my list is uh, a new records management system. So the records management system that we currently operate is IMC. Uh, that's the name of the company. And the last time that uh, we had switched over to IMC was 2003. So it's quite, um, our system's old and a little bit antiquated. And I'm going to turn it over to Captain Young to kind of discuss, uh, you know, why we are seeking a new records management system. Ron? Everyone. <clears throat> Um, full disclosure before I, um, and, and I won't talk as much as Doug, I promise. Um, the, um, the full disclosure before we get going, that, that we are in the early stages of this and we're just beginning our research. Um, you know, as, as Chief Ting had said, the current system that we're utilizing is a, almost a quarter of a century old. And so we, we have a history of, of holding on to these for a long period of time. Um, and so we, we want to make certain that we do the proper research to find out, find a system that's not only robust, but has some longevity to it. Um, the, as just very quickly, the, the history of IMC, it was a Massachusetts state, it was a Massachusetts located business and, uh, it was very popular and prevalent here in New England when it first came on board at some, at one point between police and, and fire or something like 85% of all municipalities utilized IMC and, and frankly, I was here when it first got here. It was a great system. It was it was a far cry from what we're using. It was an old PC uh, slave type system that went back to a, a central database, and it was it was far more intuitive than we were using at the time. Um, but as as time's gone by, it's aged. Um, records management is becoming more challenging for us. And I just jotted down a couple of things that that we've noticed over the last oh, decade or so. One of the things, of course, we've gone to a digital system. So all of our photography, uh, fingerprinting systems, uh, video type evidence, things that we use to not only, you know, complete and investigate crimes, but also things is something as basic as how we hand out permits are all done in a digital way. And it eats up in an enormous amount of volume in the um, in our records management system. Most of these records were required to, to keep 
uh, for a lifetime. And if not, there's a schedule that's established by the superintendent of public records. M many of you are probably familiar with that. And so it, these aren't these aren't records that we can delete on a readily, ready, readily basis. There are some public paper records that we can delete based on a on a system that's outlined by the state, but they're very few. Um, the integration system that we have, it doesn't it doesn't work well. It doesn't play well with others um, because the because the data the system's a little dated. Um, there have been some patches. Our IT department's great, obviously, but there are some patches, some things that we've been able to do and some workarounds. But it doesn't work well with our scheduling software. It doesn't talk at all with Munis and some of those things. Um, we uh, we we field a number of records requests on a regular basis. Um, something as simple as is you know meeting with you folks and questions that you might have about our activity. Um, certainly when we meet with the town manager and then there are public records that were that were requested on the regular basis about things that we do in the agency number of number of stops number of arrests um, you, you name it we receive a request on it on a weekly basis the system was not designed to mine that data very well um, some of the newer systems that are out there integrate um, or, or lend themselves I, I, I should say to being able to not only use that data for crime processing, for public safety related issues, but also for public records requests, we can mine the data so much easier. I've gone on a couple of demos to some of the larger agencies and see what they do and how they do things. Um, things that would take me hours, they can do in minutes. Um, the, the price that you see there is a rough estimate based on what current market standards are. Um, as I said, we've started the we've started the um, again, we're thinking long range here. We, we we started in looking what some of the systems that would meet our needs would be. And that is a, a rough ballpark of what some of the agencies are paying with today, today's prices. Um, that includes data migration. So and which actually I, I learned something about this just recently that the system that we would purchase and would be supported by IT department would be roughly about half or two thirds of the price and the rest of it would be for data migration. So things that we, you know, things that we took on board, like arrest reports, for instance, a number of years ago, we're required to maintain those records. Arrest reports are a great example. That's a lifetime, a lifetime requirement. You <laughs> have to keep that forever. So that migration component, as we move forward and investigate this future, you know, Further for the for future decision is going to be an enormous enormous uh, part of this. The biggest issue that we have here is the support. So again, I don't want to bore people with a history lesson, but IMC was originally, as I said, was a Massachusetts or New England based uh, organization. It's been sold half a dozen times over the last ten years or so. It's now owned by a corporation called Foursquare, which is based in rural Pennsylvania. Um, they've made it abundantly clear that they will not support IMC much beyond a three to five year window. So I, I wish I wish that uh, a member of our IT department was here because they could bail me out um, in this area. But what that basically means is some of the fixes that are required um, will, will not be forthcoming at some way. There's a finite life to, to this program and the support we're going to receive from Foursquare. A great example of that is POST, right? So POST is a relatively new thing that in the policing world. And the way we capture data and report data, um, Post had some very specific requirements on what they wanted and how they wanted it. And it was a very big challenge for IMC to even meet those standards. They were very reticent, they were slow to the punch. There were some frustrations at Post end and obviously in the policing end so that we could be in compliance with what the CMR regulates. So again, the, the system that we have now isn't currently broken. Um, what we're using is, is working, um, but it, it there's an end of life and it's anticipated chief ting and i discussed it. this actually goes back when chief livingstone were still here we had started planning this thinking strategically that it, this is going to have to be something that the committee is aware of and it is going to it's a large ticket item and it's a cost that we're going to have to endure the town's going to have to endure at some point i'm open for questions thank you um and i see sarah's hand is up I'm curious about, it sounds like a huge amount of data that needs to be stored forever. So where and how is it stored and who is, I mean, data can actually go bad over time. So what is, is part, it, how do you, how does the new system, if you know, because you haven't chosen it, 
going to handle all that? So one of one of the things that's and it's actually in a odd sort of way it's 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 a good thing that we've had the system for as long as we've had because as cloud based systems have evolved the security measures that are in place have evolved so a lot of this will be stored in the cloud so you know currently right now we store it all locally and um, mm -hmm. you know we had we had a data we had a data breach a couple of years ago. Um, not not a release of information out, but in terms of our internal storage, where we thought that we had lost a large portion of our data because of a failure, a hardware failure that had occurred in the time. Luckily, we have a great IT system. They were able to recover it. We have a backup system in place. Um, but that's a long answer for saying the majority of it will be stored securely in the cloud. Other questions? Uh, that, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Thank you very okay. much. You know, um, you know, I, I know the, Sandy, the list that adds up to a total has been evolving over time. You know, initially this was on a list, maybe rightly or wrongly, for next year rather than this year. So my only question is, is this essential for the coming, you know, this coming fiscal year? Um, or could it since you're still exploring, could it wait until FY26? I don't want to speak for the chief, but I, I do not believe that it's essential for this coming year. Um, we, uh, and I actually think it would be premature if we tried to try to do it this coming year, because we certainly wouldn't have enough information, understanding that it's not only just a large ticket item, but the community is going to be utilizing this for hopefully a quarter of a century or more. It, it, I don't think it would be wise for us to rush into this. We need to explore it. We need to investigate it. We need to produce the best packages. Not again. It's it's not just for the police, right? It's it's a community based package. It's, it, there's a lot of information that we share with our brothers at the fire department, with the crest department, um, and we, we you know we have to we have to deal with some of the public records requests on the regular basis. Um, no, I, I I again, Chief, I don't want to speak on your behalf, but I don't I don't think we'd be prepared to do this in this coming. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I'm in, in total agreement with what you had to say there, Ron. Uh, you know, the way that another aspect that we're trying to look at is, you know, a lot of departments across the Commonwealth are in the same boat. And so they are starting to some departments are starting to pick up on new companies and whatnot. So we're kind of waiting to see which systems are out there that are working. Because it is a big ticket item, and it is as important as we think it is. We want to sure we want to make sure that we make the right choice. So we're going to let these other departments make the mistakes first, mm. and then uh, and we'll learn from them, and then we'll be able to pick the correct system that that works for all of us. So, so I'm in total agreement. I think it can wait. Uh, it's not dire at this point, but it is something that that uh, we have to look towards down the road. Thank you. So you have um, you have a few others. I'm just yeah, few, uh, the the next item uh, at hand is a backup UHF uh, repeater at AFD North. So basically, what we are looking for is uh, a communication center. Our communication center kind of lacks a secondary uh, system, so everything is stored up in our dispatch center. If something if something catastrophic happened and our dispatch center went down, we would be in trouble. So we're looking for a secondary site, um, which is AFD North, which we have some portable units there, but we want something that's a little more fixed, a little more stable. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna direct this to Doug Geary, who's our expert on this to kind of explain that system. Go ahead, Doug. <clears throat> yeah, so currently is, uh... Chief Ting explained, currently we have some backup workstations at AFD North. So if something happened here that the, the communication center, uh, they couldn't work here, they could actually move up to the fire department and actually use those workstations to do all their communication in regards to receiving phone calls, dispatching police and fire and EMS and it would work fine, but it would work over our current radio system. So that is uh, Assistant Chief Lindsey Strongwin spoke before, we have a, a radio system structure. So basically that would just be like, say if uh, a toaster caught on fire in their kitchen, and it was full of smoke, they could leave that room, leave that, go to the fire department and run the same system in a remote setting. What this request is for is for a totally 
small standalone system that if our radio system failed completely, the whole structure and our communication center could not dispatch uh, police, they could relocate to uh, the fire department, uh, the North Station, and have a totally separate standalone radio that would be able to, tra to receive, transmit and receive communications from the dispatch to us. Um, so it's again, it's a fail safe. So if our big system fails, this is a small system, not as robust, but it would be something better than nothing. Currently, the fire department, ha I believe, has the same thing. Um, they, if, if their system completely failed, which is basically meshed with ours, if it completely failed, they have that option to go to this standalone, smaller dispatching thing or uh, uh, so smaller system. So they currently have it, we don't. So we're requesting that we have that option. So if something does happen, um, it can also be used as a training site for new dispatchers. So they can also go up there and do some simulated training exercises on this as well, with the fire department and their system. So they could get some, some real time um, training uh, scenarios without actually going on our main system and tying up those resources. They're obviously going to learn on the job during training in that, but this gives them the ability to do some preliminary training on these uh, on these remote sites. Any questions on this one? Sarah? I have so many questions. This is this is different from the big expensive emergency uh, system we heard about from fire earlier. Yeah, so the, the one from fire is actually, a, it's a joint police and fire. It's just Assistant Chief Stromgren's taking the lead on the presentation. So yes, that is something that we, we eventually need to do with our current radio system because our uh, our current overall radio system is is very antiquated for the times. Um, I, I'm not sure I caught everything he said, but our system is a single site transmit site. So we have one transmit site up on Mount Lincoln and Pelham. That worked great years ago, but now that we have multiple buildings, um, a lot of these uh, commercial or residential over commercial buildings are extremely thick with steel and, and uh, concrete. And that is the worst thing for radio systems because it has such a hard time. That is also compounded by the fact that uh, I'd say probably 10 or 15 years ago, the FCC mandated that we go from a wide band spectrum frequency to a narrow band spectrum frequency. And with that came many problems. Wide band is, is a very strong, wide, permeable um, radio frequency that can penetrate buildings. When they went to narrow band, that caused a lot of problems with permeability. So now when we're in buildings, even like our police station, it's very difficult to hear radio transmissions because that single transmit site with the low band frequency is, or uh, narrow band frequency is trying to get in the building and it can't very effectively. So with that, um, that's why we're we're asking for a bigger radio system. This other thing, the other standalone backup system is something we've been in the talks about for many years and it's been put off, put off. This is something that if the big system failed and our current system is, is running, but it could fail at any time, we have no option to dispatch our police officers if something happened with our current system. So with that, it's really a, a, an inexpensive backup option and many police and fire and communication centers have that. So mm -hmm. if something did happen, whether in our communication center or the, the network uh, radio network itself, we have somewhere to go and do that. Welcome. Okay, I don't see any other questions, so we could move on to the next. Okay, move on. The next uh, item that um, is on my list is the 911 Equature recording system. So I wish I had a dispatcher here to kind of explain that. Uh, what it is is basically every call that comes in, 
to our 911 system is recorded. Um, and from my understanding, essentially, is that the state used to mandate a specific system that we currently use. And the state is no longer, and basically they funded it, um, and the state is no longer using that. So the state wants all of the 911 uh, dispatch centers to go to a different system, which is this uh, 911 Equature recording system. So the one that we currently have is becoming obsolete and um, it's no longer being supported. Uh, so we're, we're seeking for this new system that, that's gonna be forced for us to be used anyways. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't know if you have more info on that, Doug. Uh, yeah, you're totally yeah. correct. Uh, uh, the state basically back in the day mandated a certain recording system. They actually provided it. They actually maintained it and and did all the work with it. Now the state is basically getting out of that and is putting it back on the, on the municipalities to buy their own system. And they're recommending that this is the system they buy. So it's uh, the continuity across the state is the same, but again, they're putting it on the municipality to buy the system and maintain the system. So thank you, Massachusetts. Um, but that's what's happening with that now. And again, everything is going to be on us to buy it, maintain it, where in the past the state provided it, maintained it. And again, we're, it's now when they've made the decision, it's now it, this is becoming the end of life for this machine. So at some point, it's not going to have any any support or repair option to it, and obviously we have to have this uh, have to have this running to do the nine one one recordings twenty four seven three sixty five. Um, the only question I had on this one, um, thank, is um, is this a one time expense? So you said then there's maintaining it, but this is put this new recording system in and then we've got it and it will last however many years the the physical thing uh, yeah is. my understanding is is that we we purchase it once there may be a uh a, an annual uh support um fee and again mike curtain the the uh, communications director he would know more about this but there I, might I believe be there's yeah i believe there is a there's a fee associated with that annually and it's a maintenance fee okay what that is i don't know no that's okay it, it doesn't sound like you have a choice um no we don't unfortunately so is is that it on projects uh, i have one more one more okay. to talk about uh, which is our in-car video system and video evidence software so our current system is uh is a is made by a company called WatchGuard. That company uh, has recently been bought out by Motorola, and so Motorola has taken the particular system that we used and making that one obsolete, and they're revamping it, making it more robust and and a lot more advanced. Um, so there's no longer any support for those uh, that particular model that we have. So this particular uh, request is to replace all of that. So we can have the updated model. The, the ones that we currently have are are not going to be any good anymore. And once they fail, that's going to be it. And again, our resident expert is Doug, and he can talk about that. So it's not only our in uh, in vehicle cruiser cameras; it also affects our interview rooms with the camera systems and recording systems, as well as our um, our cell block intake for booking. So if you want to take it away, Doug. Sure. So we've been in the uh, the in-car video business probably for 15 or 20 years. We were very, very progressive with getting in-car video many years ago. So uh, we've had several systems in the, in the early years, but we actually probably 15 years ago, I want to say, we, uh, we purchased these systems and they've been extremely... Uh, beneficial to us in our job in regards to the police work we do and uh, in, in court use, bringing evidence to court, video evidence. So as uh, Chief Ting said, these systems are facing end of life. So this WatchGuard company was very um, progressive with their video systems. Um, 
they a lot of police departments bought them and Motorola came in and liked what this company was doing and Motorola bought the company which is great but then Motorola took this product all the good of it made their own system which looks exactly like it but it has a newer flair to it and in the process they changed the operating system of um, that runs these these um, video systems as well as the in-house data server that's in-house they changed the software to run that so if i needed to buy any more video systems we were on a, a every other year two system re uh, replacement and obviously during COVID, we stopped that. Um, now, if I needed to buy a new system, the new system would not be compatible with the old system. So we're at, we're at a point now where I'm not buying any new ones. I'm maintaining what we have, but as Chief Ting says, as, as the systems fail and there's no support, then I have to place those systems out of service and they're permanently out of service. So the, the natural progression would be here to, um, go with Motorola's new new camera system and new evidence management, uh, video management system. And that could either be uh, housed locally on an in-house server, or the new thing is like um, Sean Hannon said, everything can go to the cloud now, or uh, Captain Young said for our records management. Most of the stuff goes to a secure cloud now. So that's an option. So moving forward, for our in-car video, our booking intake rooms, and our two interview rooms, this would be the new technology to move forward for the next 15 or 20 years. So we're at a point it's going to start stopping and fail, and we're not going to have any options. And what is the price tag for the full replacement? Uh, Chief Ting, what do we what do we put down for that? Oh, we to... quoted 195,000 for full replacement of uh, an estimated 20 units. Right. That would cover all of our vehicles, all of our interview rooms, and all of our uh, booking intake rooms. And then that allows, and so as the officers make recordings in the field or do interviews or do intake booking, they can then go back to a computer, go to a website, which is the cloud, and actually watch the video. We have to watch this video before we ever type any reports, because obviously the report needs to match the video. The video needs to match the report. So it's a it's a it's a huge piece of uh, equipment that we use right now on a daily basis. I may have missed it, but I didn't see it on the original list. Um, so, or the list we were looking at. So it, it would be good to get just a paragraph. It, you know. So did others see this? So I may have just missed this item. You know, we still had it penciled in at eighteen thousand for a replace two on one list, but you know we're just we're trying to keep a tally of the totals and this sure. this this is a big <laughs> this is a bigger number so i guess the question i have is do you need do you, do you need to do 20 all at the same time or could you do some but not all well like i said the old system is not compatible with the new system the new, so if yeah. we did that we'd have to maintain two systems okay two evidence libraries two maintenance agreements and again, as those fail on the older side, I'd have I'd want to replace them. So my theory is, is that if we stop the maintaining the system, the older system and not pay for the, the maintenance fees and pay for the replacement of the parts and we stop that cost and we obviously do a one time purchase, that one time purchase is going to last us for 15 or 20 years. Yes, there is annual maintenance costs to go along with it, but that's part of any software uh, package that we own. There's always uh, maintenance, annual maintenance costs. And could you live with the not great system that won't be supported very long? Um, for one I mean, more we, year? I mean we, could, like we could live probably one more fiscal year, um, but I can't guarantee anything about that. Right now I have... Out of the 20 units, I have 19 running. I have one right now that I'm having problems with repairing. I'm having problems getting parts for it. Um, and I'm I'm trying to locate stuff to get it back up and running. So right now I'm doing okay. I can't tell you where I'm going to be six or a year from now. Any, any other questions? 
No, thank you. Thank you very much. And and also thank you for the service to the town, all of you, the police, fire, EMS team. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. So we can send that information over to you. Um, we'll make sure that you get that. No, and it would be great because Sandy and Jennifer are, are keeping a track of this. And at some point, we're going to have to find out what the total is for this year. Um, it, not just you. Right, right, the, right. Certainly. The, the, whole, the whole works. <laughs> so thank you very much. Okay. So um, we have one other, I think one other, it's the parking vehicle. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that kind of, it falls under the parking yeah. uh, budget, but we actually... As part of my duties, I actually may obviously maintain our fleet of vehicles. So I do that as a courtesy to the parking division since we actually um, we actually supervise the employees in the field. Um, so uh, the car is a 2020 Ford Fusion Hybrid. It's done uh, it's done a very diligent job of of day to day parking life. Um, it's probably close to 80,000 miles, but it's a very hard. 80,000 city miles. Um, so things are starting to break. Um, things are becoming unreliable. Um, and uh, a lot of high ticket costs. We actually had it on the, the uh, road the other day and it died and I couldn't figure out why it was, but it had some kind of hybrid meltdown that I had to try to figure out. Luckily, I got it back running and fingers crossed it's still going. Fast forward to what's today? Today is uh, Thursday. Fast forward or rewind to Tuesday of this week. Um, Zach Horvath, one of our parking enforcement officers, he was doing his proper traffic uh, awareness and stopped for a um, pedestrian at a crosswalk on East Pleasant Street right by the spoke. And a uh, younger gentleman who was not driving very smart decided to try to pass a car behind him and then pull back in behind Zach. And he got rear ended. So the current parking car is uh, severely damaged sitting in our back lot, really not safe to drive. Um, so we're kind of at a crossroads here in regards to hearing from the insurance company, whether it's repairable or they're going to total it. So repairing is one thing. If they agree to it, um, if they think it's worth their the, the insurance company's uh, investment, um, but if they total it, Definitely the cost of what that car was in 2012 is not going to be the cost of what the car is going to be to this day and age. So I'm still awaiting the insurance company to let me know. So at some point we might have to replace it because of the damage. Um, and I don't know what those, those numbers are yet because I haven't done any research in regards to if they do total it, what that cost would be to replace it. And I the same headache is going to happen as I had with the Crest vehicles is then if we have to replace it, trying to find an available vehicle under state contract that I can find and secure. And then um, obviously they were the insurance company will give us X amount of dollars, but I'm sure that uh, won't cover the cost. So then we have to come up with where that extra money is. So it might be cheaper now to get the car because if they total it, it's less we have to pay than paying for a brand new one. That's something that I'm going to have to find out in the next few days. So we'll spin on it. Any the question I had on this, it was penciled in at sixty thousand dollars, and when I looked at this is the this is the car that goes around giving people tickets, correct? You know, I um, mean that's well, I mean, yeah, not tickets, checking meters, checking, yeah. yeah. We call them parking ambassadors now. I've been not parking them. ambassadors. Sometimes they say, "Oh, you're only a few minutes over." Yes, that uh, they have a lot of discretion, and I think uh, I know Zach. Uh, he's been on a job not too long, and I've talked to a lot of people in the community that really like him because he's a very common sense um, parking ambassador. So Anna may ask the electric side. I'm going to stay on the hybrid side because when I went on quickly to say, "What's the least expensive small hybrid that I can buy?" 
I was finding price tags under 30,000 because this car doesn't have to have all the bills and whistles that we've been hearing for the police and fire cars, correct? Exactly. So definitely this would be a, a prime candidate for a full electric vehicle. Um, something in regards to, uh, I have to consider with this is that they haul around, still haul around change and collect money from meters. So they have a bunch of equipment, these metal boxes, these buckets, they carry around these three big orange boots that they put on people's cars. So there is a kind of a, um, a, a component of this car that I need to have so they can store that stuff safely in a vehicle and not be injured by that if, should they get an accident. So the current car they have has actually has a petition between the front seat and the back seat. So if they get hit, things don't go flying forward and hit them in the head and seriously injure them. So I, just, I have to consider something in that nature that would be able to house their equipment, but yet um, still be functional. And in, in an electric car, they spend 99.9% .9 of their time in town. So parking starts at eight in the morning. And, and when we have a full complement, it ends at eight at night. So it can definitely be plugged in and be charged for a, a long duration and um, and be used. Anna. Um, thanks, Kathy. That that was my question. And and um, Officer Gary, I, I, that was the answer I was I was hoping for. Um, I think my question is actually around timing. So given the uh, accident, which bummer, um, big bummer. And you said, when do you anticipate a lot of this kind of is conditional on what the insurance company comes back with. Right. And so when do you anticipate knowing, like, will it be before we wrap this process up or will it? So I, I hopefully should know within the next week or two. So okay. um, the, the claim has been submitted to the insurance company. I usually get a confirmation back again, this happened on Tuesday, it's Thursday. So I don't have a confirmation yet. Um, actually, because we had a separate accident happen with one of our cars, one of our cruisers got rear-ended. The appraiser was here and I said, oh, by the way, look at this car, but check this one out. So he's already taken the information about the car. So I'm waiting for the insurance company to say, okay. And then once they reach out to them, they say, okay, we already saw the car. And hopefully that process will happen quick. So I, I anticipate within the next couple of weeks, I'll have that yes, we're repairing it. No, we're totaling it. And this is what we're going to give you. Um, great. And, and, you know, I, I do hear your point about the um, safety in terms of storing things. I, I've, I've officially in my mind ruled out like, a, you know, a little smart car, um, but I'm sure that there are lots of um, options out there. So uh, I think it sounds like Kathy will just need to stay tuned on this one and, um, and go from there. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it. And oh my gosh, put big springs on the back of the cars or something. People keep rear-ending you. Uh, I, couldn't have I have come. solved. I have solved the rear-ending problem. Don't worry, everybody. Jennifer. Jennifer, your hand is up. Sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button. Um, sorry if you mentioned this, but does the in the case of the parking car, does the at fault drivers insurance company come into play? Yes, so the the uh, they do. They're actually paying for a rental vehicle right now. So uh, the parking car will not be driving around saying parking management anymore. He'll be driving around in a white Chevy Impala with nothing on it. So he's a, he's in a sneaky mode. <laughs> okay. So yes, the the insurance company is their insurance company is currently paying for the rental. We always go through our insurance company, so we obviously we're taken care of properly. And then our insurance company goes after their insurance company to be compensated in full, including the deductible, to make sure that the town is fully compensated. So then is it actually an expense? Expense for? I mean, like we're talking like the, this committee is tasked with deciding how to spend funds. But if we're if, if ultimately the at fault drivers insurance company is going to compensate like is this going to be an out-of-pocket expense for the town so like i said it's a 2020 or 2012 ford fusion hybrid so the town i believe our insurance policy actually covers the cost of the vehicle at the time of purchase so i don't actually have that number offhand i could definitely research that and get that to you so i'm assuming that they're going to give us the value oh, yeah. <laughs> car when we bought it and then obviously right. we go to buy now 
that that cost is going to be larger than what we paid for the car originally. So yeah, there'll be some out of pocket cost um, to to cover the difference, right? But it wouldn't be the expense of buying a whole brand new car like we were originally requesting for parking. Gotcha. Thanks. You're welcome, Sarah. Yeah, and just just clarifying, you are you you already wanted to replace this vehicle before it was rear ended, right? Yes, because it's just it's it's a very tired yeah. car. It's starting yeah. to get very quirky and unreliable. Um, right. So the the issue is just how much money, if any, you'll yeah. get. So yeah. so actually okay. the actually the the accident could benefit us <laughs> in a certain way. I hate to say that, but it could. Thank you, um, sir. Your hand is still up. Is that just, uh, Jennifer? Is that just you didn't take it down yet? Yes, that's right. So, any other questions? So we might have enough money to buy half a car <laughs> from insurance, and then we need the other half, or something like that. Yes. Or we can look into Teslas again. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> there are much better electric options at this point. <laughs> so I is that's the list right now, correct? It is. Okay. And so I want to thank you all very much. And I see that Doug Slaughter has been with us, but I'm not sure exactly. We I don't think we have another project on our list, but Doug, you're certainly and I'm and police fire you wanna leave, you can, you can stay. <laughs> Hi, Doug. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I've been doing plenty of other things, um, <laughs> if you hadn't noticed. But uh, I was just here to talk to IT and the fact that we didn't have a request this year and explain it if anyone had a question about that. But we're, we're in a sort of sweet spot in a way, I guess is a simple description. Um, we have uh, a new building that's going up. And so that's going to afford us an opportunity to do some investment in, in IT infrastructure. So that's going to be a help. Um, and previous uh, capital is holding uh, for us. Uh, we've not spent it all yet. So we've got existing capital that you've, you've uh, appropriated in past years that are going to help sustain us over the next year. I think next year we'll be back with an ask, but in the current year, we didn't need one. So I just wanted to share that with you all and, you know, uh, let you know why it's a zero, which it never is, but it is this year. So thank you. It's actually, and you, you don't want us to take back that unspent money because you're planning on using it, correct? That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. We will spend it, just we haven't spent it yet. We've, you know, we've been fortunate with some of the purchasing and, yeah. and some of the needs. And so we've been able to kind of make it last a little bit. So we're trying to be smart with it. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I didn't call on you initially because I didn't see a project when we did IT. So, so, so thank you. Thank you for joining us. So I'm looking, it's, it's almost six o'clock. I don't see any public. So I'm assuming we don't have any public comment. Um, and we already have a volunteer for, uh, or, a new kind of volunteer I assigned minute taking <laughs> for next week and Sarah did it for this week. The only other thing I just wanted to mention um, was that I sent everyone minutes. I got one all clear from one per person and one careful reader found some oddities. So I fixed them. We posted the minutes, but I'm not calling them final yet because I've been reviewing minutes. And since I took the minutes, I didn't feel like I could review them. So if, if you would all just take a look at them, they're in this week's package. And if you see anything, let me know. Otherwise we can next week, just make them final um, and not have to take up time. And Sandy, I don't know whether you have any other words of wisdom for us um, for before we come back together next week. I just say a couple of things. One is um, I think this issue of hybrid public safety or electric public safety vehicles is a big issue. Um, what I have heard consistently talking to departments is for or any number of reasons. They are just not ready to do them yet. So I just wanted to reiterate that because um, 
I know it's frustrating to see that this stuff hasn't moved forward. Um, I know personally, I would like to see it move forward. Um, my partner works in DC um, all the time working on climate issues. So she would like to see it happen. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I just want to give you my two cents. My reading on it is I just think the manufacturers have not been uh, for coming forward with designs that meet public safety's needs. And I, I don't know if you wanted to respond to that, but- I do, I really appreciate you saying that, Sandy. I think I, my my reason for continually asking and, you know, and I'm not throwing a hissy fit about it or anything, hopefully, yeah. you know, it takes it that way. But, but I, I think my reason for asking is to make sure that I know that it's because their manufacturers are not getting the, the options out there well enough, but I want our departments to keep asking and I want us to keep asking the departments. And I think it's for us, it's or for me, it's really about making sure that folks know this is on our radar and that we're looking for it. And that if manufacturers start to make it and it starts to make more sense, just like electric, electric school buses, I know we've had challenges with them, but that they are becoming phased in more often and that there are grants available, et cetera, et cetera. So I think my, my purpose in asking is to kind of check in and confirm what I believe is true, which is, is this available? Um, uh -huh. Just to reiterate that I'd, I'd love to see it. And I, I know we're not there yet, but I, I want to keep asking just to make sure folks know that it's, it's on the radar, um, if that helps. But I, I do understand where you're coming from and I appreciate uh, your response. Okay. Lee, and Lee, Lee has her hand up. I was in Iceland this summer where I was told that for many, many decades, they had always, Toyotas had always been the car of choice. <laughs> and now it had shifted to Teslas because Iceland is, you know, gas is very expensive and electricity is very cheap. But I kept asking and they said, except for our emergency vehicles. So I just I, I had my hand up and took it down. Yep. Maybe this is of interest, you know, at the moment. I don't want to waste your time. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it pays to wait a little because things get better and cheaper quickly. So yep. just another thought. And I'll take my right. hand down. Um, the other thing I just want to say, and I'm not making a judgment yet because I really have just more questions than I have answers, and that is um, I still have a lot of questions about this um, police radio replacement. It showed up on our screens, so to speak, just recently, and I guess I would like to know a little bit more about it. So. Sometimes when public safety comes in with projects that sound important and good, they are important and good, and sometimes they need a little more work. So I just want you to know there are a number of things that have been presented to you, some of which I think are ready for prime time, others may not be. So that's kind of where, how I'm and, thinking about things now. Sandy, that's the 1.9 million. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's, it's a huge number all at once and, uh, I mean, I did ask them in our budget hearings, if this is so important, why is this the first time I'm hearing about it or they're hearing about it? So we'll see. I just want to let you know that uh, trust but verify is how I would put it. How do we That's do right. that? How do we do that? Excuse me. <laughs> how are we going to know if it's really urgent or not? Um, I think that partly is going to be some conversations I'm going to have with both chiefs. And uh, I had some initial conversations and got some different answers. So I got some email during this meeting. Uh, and uh, I just want to look into it some more. So uh, one of the things that's always hard about doing this work is that all these things sound like great ideas. Yeah, sorry. And they basically, hold on. And they basically, everybody has great things that they would like to do and are justifiable, but um, sometimes you just have to say no or say, say wait a year. So that's the mode I'm in right now. Well, and I think it would be 
as soon as you can come with to us with some of those insights, because I've been putting like a question mark or a slash through and mainly focusing on big ticket items. I figure it doesn't, doesn't help mm -hmm. to get rid of $20,000, you know, <laughs> right. you know, because as you, as you showed it, uh, some of this could be put off in um, debt, debt financing, but mm -hmm. that just gets us in trouble over the next few years. So, and I heard the one today was we don't need to do it this year. And I said, well, that's good news because it's, it's, it was a really big number, Yeah, right. Exactly. you know, so that was excellent to hear directly from people rather than us having to puzzle over it. So that would be excellent to get as many insights from you as we can. Sarah. Yeah, we're going to need clearly an updated spreadsheet because yep. Some of the prices have changed and I'm not sure, you know, some things weren't in the packet and I don't know if they're in the spreadsheet. And I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be going back to an old packet to see a spreadsheet that's getting updated all the time or or you will present us a new spreadsheet revised list. I've been working and we, we just finished up all of our budget meetings, including discussions with the department heads about their uh, operating and capital needs. So I now have notes from uh, as recently as Tuesday, which I then need to put into a more coherent form and update the spreadsheet. Okay. I also just yesterday finally talked to um, Sonia about the debt numbers. So there are a lot of these things that are just sort of coming together. And um, I know I need to get it to you, but sometimes, when you have to get stuff from other people, you know, it takes a while. You know, Sarah, I did double, the spreadsheet hasn't been updated, Sarah. So, you know, what I've done is I'm manually updating it by crossing things out and moving arrows over. And, you know, it's, so it's, it's a messy. So Lee. Yeah. Again, a very ignorant question. Uh, when we talk about moving things up to the cloud now, as opposed to what, confidence do we have that the current state of the cloud is going to be where we want to be as opposed to waiting and doing it later? Um, I would, if I could speak to that, um, I do think that's an important issue, but I would also opine that um, it is becoming very common for um, municipalities to move their data to the cloud in for all sorts of departments, not just public safety. Um, you know, the whole issue of things like police cameras take terabytes, whatever a terabyte is, it sounds terrifying, of data. It's big, it's very big, right? <laughs> so, um, so I do think it is becoming a common practice. Uh, uh, and I would say in, in my opinion, for what it's worth, um, it's become reliable enough through repeated usage that I'm not worried about it as a um, as a technology that that might be you know too new. Okay. Uh, I think, so that's Thank just. Yeah. So, are any other comments? If not, um, if someone wants to make a motion to adjourn, we'll do a an adjourn. Move. <laughs> Bob moved. Kathy seconds. Um, I'll just do a quick uh, roll call. Bob? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Yeah. Sarah? Yes. Eugene? Yes. Anna? Yes. Lee? Yes. And Jennifer? Oh, no, Jennifer uh, Shaw is gone. So Jennifer has left us. So it's unanimous for those who got to be. We are adjourned until next week. I want to thank everyone and thank Jennifer LaFontaine and Sandy, um, I know how much heavy lifting you're doing to scramble to uh, meet a schedule that was already in, yeah. front of, in the past before you started. So thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.